Okay, perfect. There we go. Okay, great. Boom. And we are live. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to a very special edition of Off the Record on the People's Podcast this afternoon. We have an incredible guest with us all the way from across the pond, one who's going to give us some amazing information as well as inspiration. And that is none other than Brother Student Minister Leo Muhammad uh, uh, from London. Asalaamu Alaikum, sir. Oh, wow. Salaam, my beloved brother. Thank you so much for the invitation. It's a great honor and privilege to have the opportunity to appear on your show once again. Yes, sir. Okay, great. Um, and first of all, from the, uh, we wanna thank your family, yourself and all of the believers uh, who are holding it down in London. Uh, the positive response from your interview from Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, YouTube has been great. Uh, today, we have a serious subject that we're dealing with. Um, and I wanted to kick off this, uh, us being back to the People's Podcast and with you, uh, for this new season coming, dealing with a uh, powerful subject, dealing with, quote, UFOs, end quote, the mother plane, the will, baby planes, things of that nature. Um, what I saw a flyer for you speaking on this subject. What made you decide to pick up that, that heavy subject? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, dear uh, beloved brother. Let me just begin in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the most merciful that there is no God but Allah and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. We can never thank Allah enough, dear beloved family, for coming to us in the person of Master Farad Muhammad and for raising up the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, the long-awaited Messiah, the exalted Christ. And of course, we wouldn't know anything about those two magnificent human beings were it not for the man who is currently in our midst the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan Muhammad. It's in their names, dear beloved families, that I greet you once again in the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, sir. All praise is due to Allah. Just to address your question, you know, um, we began a few months ago now a, a new series uh, of shows on the internet, uh, on Zoom, and also YouTube Live. Uh, entitled Image and Nation, which you can, I think, see behind me. Image Nation. And of course, you know, that's compounded, uh, really, when you put it all together, it's imagination. And, you know, we really wanted to um, encourage uh, human beings, members of the human family, to once again employ that magnificent um, skill, principle, um, uh, natural ability, which is called imagination, to be able to image a nation, to be able to see something better and bigger than that which we have been, in a sense, confined to since we have come uh, into the Western Hemisphere uh, as a destroyed, enslaved people. We have not been allowed to exercise our own imagination in terms of having self-determination and being able to plot a course for ourselves as a people. So having started that, you know, I don't ever want to give the impression to anybody that I am a person who went to bed one night and was inspired and woke up the next day with you know, some magnificent teaching that I now want to share with the general public. The truth is that as a young man growing up in the United Kingdom, I was a very ignorant and foolish young man, really didn't know anything about myself, anything about my history, culture, so on and so forth, where I was um, going or where indeed I was coming from. Until I was blessed to hear the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad as taught and exemplified by the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. And brother, once I heard those teachings, there was no looking back. It was then, you know, a, a, a point of developing myself, of course, employing self-improvement, the basis for community development. 
And then, of course, as you explore the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, uh, one of the most fundamental elements of the teachings is this teaching on the wheel, the great wheel in the sky, the mothership, and of course, the 1500 baby wheels that are contained within this magnificent vehicle that is above our heads as we speak. And so at a certain point in time, I made the determination that, you know, this is one of those areas of the teachings that we have to address, we have to speak about it, because we cannot pretend that this is not, again, as I said, fundamental to the understanding of God, the understanding of Satan, the understanding of the time, and what must be done to, again, use that terminology that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has made us all familiar with. And so, I decided to begin speaking about that on the Imidah show approximately seven weeks ago. And we've just last week kind of ended the series uh, after seven weeks uh, because it took long in truth to, to really try to get across the point that I was trying to make, which is to demystify the whole uh, conversation around UFOs, so-called unidentified flying objects, or UAPs, Unidentified Aerial Phenomena. And so, you know, uh, what I'm trying to do uh, in that series of talks was to uh, quote from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, quote from, of course, the, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, quote from our great brother, Brother Ilya Rashad Muhammad, who has done a magnificent works uh, uh, written books and so on and so forth around the wheel and the you know the the, the mothership and of course I, last week we quoted from uh, uh, sister uh, minister dr ava muhammad and you know we try to do our very best to give the people a, a really good idea about what the wheel is all about and what those uh uh, baby wheels or so-called flying saucers represent and you know uh, the feedback has been uh, magnificent from those who have you know watched and listened and um, it's essentially that was what I attempted to do brother by talking about this subject all oh, praises due to a lie yes sir beautiful people are showing you love all across the country both my sisters Miriam and Naima both send the greetings to you as well sir and thank you, everyone who continues to watch on Facebook and on our YouTube family. Please let us know where, where you all are watching. Uh, now, now, Brother Leo, I wanted to ask you about when you said demystify uh, the phenomenon of that, which is the mother plane in the will. In the UK, is it the same uh, type of mystery as it is across the world, or are you all, or do you find that the people are more open to uh, the reality of the mother plane? Yes, sir. Um, just, just, just a very, very quick comment also to also, uh, dear beloved brother Joshua, uh, extend greetings and love to your beloved sisters and your, uh, your family. You know, it's very, very important that we do acknowledge that foundation behind yourself. And so I do want to send greetings uh, to our former Supreme Captain, our beautiful brother, your father, and also your family, your extended family, thank you so much uh, to your family for giving uh, birth and, and taking care and guiding you in the manner in which you've been guided to become the young man that you are. We're thankful and grateful to Allah for you, brother. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. So um, in terms of the question, you know, brother, I, I imagine um, it's the same here as it is in the United States of America, as it is all over the world. Um, there is a lot of people uh, running, I believe now, really into the millions who have seen strange phenomena in the sky, who have seen these vehicles, who have seen and witnessed really phenomenal things um, that are unexplained. And they wonder, you know, last week on the Image of Nation show, I quoted that uh, little kind of uh, ditty called, it goes, twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. And I, that was written in around 1805. 
And, you know, again, people I'm sure have heard this, you know, uh, for many, many years, but have we ever really kind of broken it down and, and gone deeper into it? Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are up above the sky so high, like a diamond in the sky. And it goes on, there's much more to it. But if we just stop with that first bit, if you say twinkle, twinkle, little star, then in the next breath, how I wonder what you are. Why are you wondering what I am if you know that I'm a star? Mm. Evidently, this is not just a star in mm. the sky because in fact, stars don't twinkle. Stars mm. are light years away and they shine a constant light that like when you look at the North Star, for instance, you can just see it, it's just there. It's, it's geostationary in the same part of the sky each and every night, hence why you can call it the North Star because it can guide you to the North. But when you have something that is twinkling now, changing colors from red to green to amber and all manner of colors in between, then you are wondering what this is. When those uh, diamond experts look into the diamond with their little glass, they're looking for the, the quality, the carats, the value of the diamond, and they see all manner of colors in there sparkling away. Well, my dear brother, this is uh, again why that ditty refers to uh, up above the sky so high, like a diamond in the sky, because this is not no ordinary uh, uh, light show that we're witnessing with these baby wheels and in fact with the great mother ship. And so I started like that because uh, what I'm trying to get our people and the people of the world to really understand is that this is a phenomena which is real. These are real entities, real vehicles that are above our heads that people see but remain unexplained because the United States government, the British government, the Russian government, the Chinese government, all of these governments have agencies which have spent uh, literally to the tune of billions of dollars and other currencies investigating and looking into this phenomena called UFO, UFOs or UAPs. And it is our belief within the nation of Islam that they have a lot of information about these things, but they keep it secret from the masses of the people. And what I'm attempting to do in the series of talks that we've recently done is to try to enlighten the masses of the people as to what the true identity of these uh, wheels are, rather than to allow the people to remain in ignorance and wondering what's going on and thinking in truth or going along with the popular Hollywood narrative and government narrative of extraterrestrial. So in other words, these may be entities that are coming from some other place, coming from Mars or Venus or coming from some, some distant planet, little green men, so to speak. And so we wanted to try to dispel such myths and really begin to give the people a, a much firmer grounding as to the true identity of the world. Oh, praise due to Allah. Yes, sir. Great job, sir. And um, our brother in uh, Rico uh, Bay says, Assalamu alaikum, guys. Um, keep up the great work, uh, Brother Leo. Yes, sir. My question for you is, for, where can we uh, visit? Which is it on YouTube? Instagram, how can we see these series that you've done about uh, Imagine and Nation, uh, yes. about the mother plane? So um, Image and Nation can be found on YouTube. If you go to the Nation of Islam London Study Group website on YouTube, then you can see the whole series of Image and Nation. In fact, I think they may have taken one of them down. You know, these people are constantly interfering with what we do. But nonetheless, you can find... Um, uh, the imagination shows on um, our YouTube channel, which is the Nation of Islam London Study Group. 
the Nation of Islam London Study Group, and you can find the Image the Nation shows on there on YouTube. And we go live each Thursday evening um, at 6.30. GMT, Greenwich Mean Time. You'll have to work out the time difference depending on where you are in North America or in other parts of the world. But generally, it's uh, GMT, 6.30 on a Thursday evening when we go live on Zoom and also on YouTube. Do all praises due to Allah. Yes, sir. Now, I have a question for you, sir. You're saying that what the uh, people have seen all around the world, these these objects are not driven or flown by little green men. Who are they flown by? Yes, sir. Beautiful question, brother. You know, you know, dear brother, so many people, again, uh, on our internet, uh, we talk about God. We say we love God, whether we are Muslims or Christians or Sikhs or Hindus or Buddhist, uh, Rasta, you name it, you know, most people will claim to believe in a God. And again, most people, especially when it comes to the um, three monotheistic religions of Islam, uh, Christianity, and Judaism, again, they will claim that this is one God who is omnipotent, omniscient, you know, all powerful, all seeing, all knowing, etc. And they will declare the reality of God, okay? But at the same time, if you point out the fact, as we do in the nation of Islam, that we believe that almighty God Allah appeared in the person of a man, Master Farad Muhammad, all of a sudden they become vague. <laughs> they get, they get, um, disbelieving because how can God be a man? But then listen to the language that we use all the time when we're talking about God. We say that God sees, we say that God hears, we say that God gets angry, and everything that we describe about God are human characteristics and human emotions and human behavior. And God is the supreme being. And we are human beings. And all that means is that he is the supreme human being among the human beings. He has uh, power, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that's greater than any of the human beings. Ye are all God's children of the most high God. The Christians say, our father who art in heaven. Well, come on. Are you, are you suggesting that the father is other than a man, other than a human being who is supreme? And so, you know, dear brother, we wanted to really emphasize this point. If you get a copy of Message to the Black Man, all praises due to Allah, and you look at the opening of Message to the Black Man, how the Honorable Elijah Muhammad breaks down these contradictions that we say he walks he talks, he sees, he flies, he sits, but yet we make him something other than a man, make him something other than a reality. We have to get away from this unreal, spookified idea about God, because this is the problem in the world today, brother. We are literally like we're schizophrenic as people because we talk about God as a reality, and then we make him other than real in that he now becomes a spook floating around in a cloud and he's not real, he can't be identified. And so, you know, we wanted to point out that there is a relationship between this God that we all talk about and these wheels mm -hmm. that are called UFOs or UAPs. You see, because um, if you go, for instance, brother, to Matthew, uh, chapter 24 around verse 30 it talks about the son of man <laughs> coming in the clouds of heaven displaying awesome power and again you know why is it that is the son of man because again you just can't get away from the reality of god being a man 
mm. and that he's literally a son of another man mm. Mm. manifested to man you see and this idea of god coming in the cloud displaying awesome power again what, what is it that people imagine you see we've we've been so spookified and and uh, by hollywood uh, that maybe we expect a man to be literally in the clouds, maybe with some little Kentucky fried chicken wings on his back or something, just flying in the clouds. But men don't fly in the clouds like that. When we fly in the clouds as men, we are in a vehicle. <laughs> we are in an airplane or a helicopter or some other flying vehicle like a space shuttle. Or we are sitting on top of a rocket called apollo 11 or apollo 15 but men when men fly men fly in machines of course now of course you know there's some gliding things that they've made where you can jump out of a plane but you still have to up in the plane and then you can glide to earth or we can be in a parachute but there has to be a contraption for the man to fly and god is no different you see you see unlike maybe the governing bodies currently on our planet who are very lawless brother they make laws and then they break laws and they literally have a philosophy that says laws are meant to be broken do we appreciate that almighty god allah who is the supreme lawmaker <laughs> doesn't make laws and then breaks his own laws mm -hmm. he makes laws that govern the universal order and he himself confines his own self to his own laws. It's beautiful, brother. Yes, sir. Absolutely beautiful. And so we wanted to demonstrate and show um, that Almighty God Allah travels in a vehicle. Mm -hmm. And when the scripture says you will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven displaying power, it's talking about the mother wheel. It's talking about that great vehicle measuring half a mile by half a mile in the sky with 1,500 small vehicles, bombing planes, or baby wheels, what the world calls flying saucers uh, within its belly. And they are designed to deal with a world of absolute evil and wickedness. And so this is what we wanted to get across. Last week, we concluded the seventh part of imagination on this subject. My dear beloved wife, Sister Claudia, who helps me kind of like in the background when we're uh, putting on the shows, she turned to me, my wife, and she said, mm, she said it felt really heavy. It mm -hmm. felt really heavy. And I had to agree with her. You see, my dear brother, because Again, we can talk all day long about uh, these scriptures, but when we really get down to it and begin to understand that the scriptures are not um, playthings, you see, there's another scripture. I think you can find it in the book of Luke, and it talks about as it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, as it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be on the coming of the Son of Man. And again, you see, when we look at the story of Lot, he, the day that he walked out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes, sir, yes, sir. The day the scripture says that brimstone and fire rain down on that city of total corruption but again where did the brimstone and fire come from did it just come out of the clouds no man mm -hmm. there was something above those clouds that was raining down that fire on that city and there was a god who was responsible because he had judged that place to be so corrupt so evil that even when he proposed to destroy the place and we're taught that abraham 
who, by the way, is the father of all of the monotheistic religions, recognized by all of the monotheistic religions as the father of the religions. When Abraham heard that this destruction was going to take place, he questioned God. He said, would you destroy the righteous along with the wicked? Mm -hmm. And God being the beneficent and the merciful God. Yes, sir. You teach him. He, he didn't want to just destroy the place over and above the, the, the reservations of the soft heart of his own prophet, a prophet who is described as a friend of God. That's right. And so he offered to Abraham the opportunity for him to go into the city of Sodom and to see if he could find some maybe 50 righteous people. He said, if you can find 50, I'll spare the whole city. And Abraham went off on this mission and, you know, he, he came back pretty quickly because he couldn't find 50. He That's couldn't right. find 40. He went back again. He couldn't find 30. And it went all the way down, dear beloved brother and listeners, to one, the, the, the God of heaven said, if you can find the God of heaven who is a man, who's got other men with him who are angels, havoc wreaking angels, yes, sir. who are destroyers of wickedness. He said to Abraham, if you can find one, I will spare the city. And eventually that prophet had to come back and confess to God. I could not find one righteous in that city. And by the way, you know, in case there are anyone listening who are thinking, well, you know, I'm so righteous. I'm, 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 I'm the righteous one. You know, if I would have been there, <laughs> that city would have been spared because I'm so good. Well, there's another scripture that said, if God was to judge humanity right. for their sins, not one soul would be left alive on the planet. Because all of us have fallen short, my dear brother. All of us have transgressed. All of us are sinners. And, it, and uh, through the mercy and the beneficence of Almighty God Allah, we continue to live because he gives us all that chance and that opportunity to reform and to transform into something that is more pleasing uh, to him based on his ultimate design for man to become god for man to reflect him and so you know when abraham couldn't find one the instruction was given for that brimstone and that fire to rain down but it didn't come out of osmosis it didn't come out of thin air it came from a place that was above in order to rain that down. And so again, what the scriptures constantly indicate to us is the reality of these vehicles. And we know that this particular mothership that we're talking about today was actually built in the 1920s. Yes, sir. And took its first flight in 1929, which according to my understanding of the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad pre pre precipitated the Wall Street crash That's right. of those times because they were so shocked, the, the powers that be were so shocked to see this vehicle take to the skies that they had no control over and that they didn't know the origins of that it literally because you know their financial systems are built on confidence and confidence that they are in control of everything on the planet and so when they see something that they don't control they lose confidence and their money markets went into a tailspin and they suffered tremendously as a result because of course we live in a world where they say money <laughs> makes the world go around. By the way, uh, uh, we're taught in the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I believe, uh, I, I believe I have this figure correct, that um, the expense that Master Farad Muhammad uh, paid out to build the mothership was 
in the region of 15 uh, billion dollars in gold mm. in the 1920s. I just want us to wrap our minds around that figure. 15 mm. billion dollars in gold. Now, mm. not in not in the fiat fake currency that's worth nothing but backed by gold and so you know somebody needs to do the calculations to determine what that 15 billion would look like to in today's uh, uh, gold market what is that worth because you know we 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 often in the black community talk about the the great mansa musa mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. of of history and how yes, he was the richest man on the planet. But I, I, I would say to anyone listening to this, you need to look at Master Farad Muhammad, Allah in person, you see, and think about his riches, think mm. about his abilities, think about his knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, because you're not dealing here with some lightweight man you're dealing with the god you are dealing with one who we are taught by the most honorable elijah muhammad is more powerful even than the original god the originator of the heavens and the earth because he is an extension now of that original mind that original power that original creative force it is found today in Master Farad Muhammad. And, you know, this wheel is the vehicle that he designed and built. And he used great scientists to build it on the island of Nippon, it was called. It's now today called Japan. Uh, and if you know anything about Japan, Japan is a whole series of little islands, some of which even in 2022 are so remote that they really haven't properly been mapped on the maps of the world. Because, um, you know, again, when you think about something like this being built in secret and that the enemy didn't know about it in those in the 20s, and of course, beyond that, it took to the skies and really was out of the reach of the enemy, um, those little islands in that region of the earth are very remote and very private uh, spaces where that work was conducted. And we're taught that um, Master Farad Muhammad employed these black genius minds, uh, scientists who all had a particular task or had a part of the wheel that they built but none of them knew what the overall end result of what they were building was going to be. Only one had the master plan, and that was Master Farad Muhammad himself. Isn't that magnificent, my dear beloved brother? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All praise is due to Allah. Beautiful teaching. Yes, sir. And people from all over the country are showing you love. And since Naima said teach, uh, Brother Victor King uh, Muhammad says, go ahead, Brother Leo, represent hard uh, but then rico bay says is it possible that we are living that passage right now um brother Ali alichi taylor says teach the wisdom brother leo people just showing you love all across the country and uh brother student minister leo i want to get do a quick 60 second commercial break for all of the sponsors of the people's podcast who make who make it possible help make it possible for us to have amazing guests like our brother all the way from london who is who is um teaching um on a heavy subject and making it um, plain for us to, to comprehend. Um, if you would like to be a sponsor or donor, please cash up the People's Podcast. We greatly appreciate it. My brother Rashad, Street Premier Media Production. He has a 4K camera and a drone. He does television and film editing. Please reach out if you need any of his services. My sister Miriam, ABC I Love Me, children's book, coloring book, and now Spanish book, all three on Amazon. Please go get that, get those. My sister Naima, Stay On Point Dance Academy, LLC. She teaches ballet virtually to young girls all across the country and right here in the studio in Atlanta, Georgia. We love our tiny dancers. Raw Communications, if you're working on a book 
and you need copy editing, project management, content development, and or media relations, please reach out to Rock Communications. Fashion Guys, Urban Streetwear, 314-329-60009. He'll keep you dressing the best of fashion, high-end clothes. He does an amazing job. Student Minister Robert L. Muhammad, conflict mediation, squashing the beef in the Southwest region out of Austin, Texas. His wife, Sister Fudia Muhammad, giving birth to a God and the science of child rear. Please get her book. Brother Kenneth, Bowtie Maker Extraordinaire. He'll ship bow ties to you anywhere in the nation. Dr. Henry M. Carter, King Henry's Turkey Legs, right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Brother Rashad Muhammad, COVID-19 Disinfecting Cleaning Services out of Chicago. My father's book, A Soldier in the Movement of Christ, abdusharif.com. And last but not least, my two books, Cleopatra, which is a children's book, and No Father, No Excuse, both of which are available on Amazon. We greatly appreciate that. Right back to our brother, uh, Brother Student Minister Leo Muhammad out of London. Okay, yes, sir, I have a question for you. And thank you all for your comments and your support. My next question for you is, the the reality if this was made since this was made in the 20s flown in the 20s in 2022 if we see if the american public people see the wheels in the sky is this something that we should be pleased like be, be look be afraid of or should we be happy to see these uh things in the sky oh brother we should be more than pleased okay, okay. We should be pleased whenever you see Whenever you are blessed, and, and, and let me just say, um, just the other night, my wife and I, we, we often, we, we look out of a particular window in our home, and we always see the little twinkling stars, which we know are uh, wheels, small wheels. We believe these are small wheels. We don't necessarily believe this is the big one. I can't say that I've ever seen the, the magnificent uh, uh, wheel, but we see these smaller wheels all the time way off in the sky but we are convinced that we are looking at baby wheels uh, because they are constantly there uh, in the night sky especially in these summer months when you know the skies are nice and clear and you can distinguish them between airplanes or other moving things in the sky you can distinguish them between uh, them and stars and we were looking and you know there was one in particular there's one in particular that's always more or less in the same spot changing colors and blinking away and we were trying to you know talk uh, uh to the uh occupants of the wheel and just letting them know how pleased and happy we are to know that they are there because we feel protected we feel as believers in the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, that they are guardian angels watching over us as believers. And so I would encourage all of us to, you know, communicate to the best of your ability if you can. When you see these things in the sky, we are taught that the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding contained on those vehicles means that they can actually read our thoughts. They can hear our thinking. They know what our motivations are. And so I would say, be very happy, be exceedingly glad whenever you see the wheels in the sky, whenever and when, when they are seen over the major cities of this world, when they manifest completely in the future, which is coming, this is coming, dear beloved family, at that time, don't be like the masses of the people who have been uh, alienated against God, who have been uh, hoodwinked by Hollywood into, you know, watching Will Smith kick E.T.'s ass, as he said in the movie, forgive my language, but, you know, this is all designed to have us running into walls running and panicking thinking that the aliens have landed or the aliens are coming because this is the language that they use over and over again in these sci-fi movies about aliens coming from space because they're seeding the mind of the people to have the people running in the opposite direction from god when in reality um this could be uh, our savior as arrived in terms of those of us who desire to be saved, those of us who desire to be given instruction as to where we should go for safety because we are heading for a time of tremendous upheaval, a time of tremendous war, a time of tremendous darkness because of course, 
we live in a world, my dear brother, where these uh, powers that be, these Europeans who have really dominated our planet for the last uh, 6,000 years since their making, uh, in 4,000 years in particular, because they lost 2,000 years in the caves and hillsides of Europe, but generally for the last 4,000 years and specifically 400 years of our enslavement and bondage, um, you know, these people, brother, they are the most warlike people on our planet. Their propensity is war. And that's why they've had a first world war, a second world war. And now we see the um, brewing of a third world war. That which we are looking at in the Ukraine will not stay in the Ukraine. It will spread. And we have been warned by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan through the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad that Europe will in fact become a theater of war once again. And that not only that, but the headline, the front page of one of the recent editions of the Final Call newspaper said it even more graphically, Europe will become a graveyard. And so, you know, we're looking at very, very serious times. But once they become nuclear, that's when Almighty God Allah and His army of 1,500 baby wheels go into action. And so, you know, we want to tell the people that this is a time, dear family, for us to really make an attempt to return back to our nature, the people of God. We are righteous by nature. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us that we are evil by circumstance. What does that mean? We have bo we've been born into a world, the scripture says, born in sin, shaped in iniquity. Yes, sir. Fortunately for many of us, in the way in which we've been taught, again, religion, we've been taught religion wrong. And so when we hear born in sin, we are thinking that the sex act itself is sin. <laughs> yes, but that's not what the scripture is talking about. The scripture is talking about being born into a world of sin. A world where sexism, racism, materialism, where, you know, rape and debauchery, where all of these evils, where murders are committed every minute, somebody's been murdered, children being abducted, going missing, children being sexually abused. I mean, we, we live in a world where, you know, this type of carnage is accepted and standard and where the entertainment industry churns out movies which are all about death and destruction as a form of entertainment you see so this is born in sin shaped in iniquity inequality is the order of the day where you have some people who have so much money brother that they couldn't spend that money in a hundred lifetimes while on the other hand, you have the other man who literally does not know where his next meal is coming from. The inequality is so stark that it's absolutely sinful. And so we now, as the people of God, by nature, yes, sir. we have to embark on a process of reform. We have to reform ourselves. We have to submit ourselves to right guidance and good teaching. And there is no greater or better guidance and good teaching than that which is offered to us by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. All praise is due to Allah. All oh, praise is due to Allah, Allah dear brother. Yes, sir. And, speak, and people are showing you love. And speaking of the Most Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, sir, um, earlier you said that you, I mean, offline, you said that you wanted to share uh, a brief clip of him. And I wanted to make sure that we shared that before this, this interview uh, came to an end, sir. Absolutely, dear brother. If I could have the ability to share my screen. Okay. I hope this works. And I would like to um, just, again, play something which I believe many of us, many of your viewers and listeners 
may have already seen because because I first saw it from uh, the Nation of Islam in the United States, and so this comes at the 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 end of the beautiful beautiful lecture given to us on the 4th of July 2020 by our illustrious uh, leader, teacher, and guide, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And, you know, at the end of that talk, the criterion, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan speaks about the wheel and speaks to us about uh, what is uh, coming on our uh, planet. And uh, that's what I wanted to really just to share briefly with us uh, before continuing. So with your permission, uh, Brother Joshua. Of course, sir. Yes, sir. Also, just to apologize in advance to any of the brothers and sisters who are watching um, for any profanity or bad language that is expressed by some of the people on the videos, it's just that the people are so amazed by what they are witnessing that they can't <laughs> find words to express. And so quite often, the first thing that comes out is some type of profanity, uh, but it's not, I, you know, this is, this, is the, this is the awesome nature of what they're witnessing. And I'll just say this very quickly. You see, sometimes even when you see the wheels that have been captured on video, on films, phone, people's uh, 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 smartphones or whatever, it, it really does not do justice to yes, what sir, the yes, people are actually seeing when they physically look in the sky and they see something. The excitement that you hear from the people based on what they're seeing is never, ever captured in those videos. The That's videos, right. they look like little balls of light. They look a bit blurred. There's different things. But really what the people themselves can see with their naked eye is so awesome that it literally leaves people speechless because they, they're they very clear. They know this is not an helicopter. They know it's not an airplane. They know that it's not no conventional thing that they can see flying through the sky. What they're looking at is what's popularly called UFOs, unidentified flying objects, UAPs, unidentified aerial phenomena. But what they're seeing is the wheels. Beautiful. That's why I asked them to show you the wheels. Yes, sir. Because I've also asked Allah to send them yes, sir. over here. Yes, sir. Just to confirm what I've said today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That the man that I'm representing you, those two men, yes. they are the masters of the wheels. Yes, sir. Doesn't even look like a plane, does it? I don't know what the this is, but whatever it is, it's not a plane and this is moving fast. I'm telling you, those aren't planes. <laughs> Hey, what? 
Hey, we don't have shit that stop in mid hell. We don't have shit that stop in mid hell. It's still there. It is not a helicopter. The helicopters don't maneuver like that. <gasps> now it's going back up. Hey, look it. It's going back up. When I close down in the garden, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. the God will do some work. Yes, sir. Not no lantern, bro. <laughs> that, that defies logic. It's like a damn UFO. Why is it, why is it supposed to be? Where's it going? I know I'm not tripping. I start my window. especie de objetos voladores no identificados, llámense ovnis, cambiando de colores. Son cinco. Yeah. ¿Qué por ahí, sí? Yo sé. No, un dron, no. Es no, una altura de esa. ¿Está viendo? Acaba el mundo ahí, ¿sí? Piscadera de nada. Tengo un luzinho piscando. All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah, dear beloved brother. And, and you, you see, if you notice, all the different accents all around the world, China, Dubai, everywhere, and everything starting on the 4th of July after the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan spoke, going all the way up to the 14th of July, all those days after, we've just seen more and more sightings. And as the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, he He's asking Allah to make a show so that the people can see that there is something, there is a phenomenon that we need to get to grips with, that we need to understand, 
that we need to demystify, despookify. I actually found myself getting a little bit emotional just listening to one of the voices there, one of the brothers in America sounded like one of our people just in the street, just saying, man, we ain't got nothing that stops in midair. We ain't got nothing that stops in midair. And I don't know why, but that just made me feel emotional because you see, dear family, as a people, we've been led to believe that we are without power. That's right. That's right. You know, that we are somehow incapable, that we can't survive without the white man, that we need him for our future and to determine our future. This is so far removed from truth, dear beloved family. We have a God who is powerful beyond oh, wow. anything that we really could imagine. When we had the great um, Savior's Day uh, conference, uh, um, I, I'm, I'm still a little bit puzzled over the dates. I'm, I'm sure I was there in 2015 in Chicago when we had a UFO conference and all of the UFO delegates came and they made presentations. But I keep hearing the date 2011 for some reason that that's when it took place. But I'm convinced that I was there because I know I was there for UFO, but, I'm, but I remember 2015, but I, I've heard 2011. But nonetheless, when that event took place. It was phenomenal. Nation of Islam hosting uh, ufologists from all over, you know, the country of America and other parts of the world, um, Brazil and also uh, uh, Mexico and other parts. And they bore witness to this phenomena. And at least one of them said that they believe that the technology that they are witnessing may be one million years ahead of anything that this planet, uh, you know, when I say this planet, I'm talking about NASA and all of these aerospace uh, uh, entities have in their arsenal, in the, at their disposal. Um, what they are witnessing looks to them to be <laughs> a million years ahead in its technological advancement. And so Black people must know that we have a God who's not going to be bamboozled or impressed by our iPhones, not going to be bamboozled or impressed by our Lamborghini Countach, or uh, I think they've moved way along from Countaches now into a different era, uh, not going to be impressed by our, um, you know, technological advancement up to this point. Um, Almighty God Allah is way ahead and we need to get in line and get ourselves together, unify ourselves as a people. Our God doesn't do magic. He doesn't do abracadabra. He is a super scientist. He is the number one mathematician of the universe. We must do maths. In other words, in our unity, there is strength. The Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that our unity is more powerful than an atomic bomb. This is what's important today, that we unify, we come together, we love one another as brothers and sisters. We recognize each other, whether we are in North America, here in Europe, or on the continent of Africa, we are family. And this is where the Europeans beat us up every day because they recognize their family wherever they are. Even Vladimir Putin, in his expressions about Ukraine, he says they are brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Recognizes them as kith and kin. And his argument against them is that they are lining up with America and NATO and trying to impose themselves on the border of Russia. Hence why his special military operation. But he's very clear that this is a fight against fellow brothers and sisters. Yes, sir, yes, sir. And Europeans, wherever they are on the planet, they recognize one another. Whenever there's a, a, a disaster somewhere on the planet, a, an airline goes down in Borneo, say for instance, and the vast majority of the people on that airplane are from Borneo, but there was one British one or one American. You will hear about that British victim. 
and that American victim, because the Europeans will report on that one, because that's how important their people are to them. We've got to become like that when it comes to the black brothers and sisters, wherever we are found on the planet Earth, we must recognize kith and kin and fall in love with our black selves all over again. We need to go and check out that mirror in the bathroom, brothers and sisters. And when you look in that mirror, fall in love with what you see. You are not black because you're cursed. You are black because you are the original man and woman of the earth. And no people could exist on this planet if they didn't come from the womb of the black woman and the seed of the black man. We are the mothers and fathers of civilization. Praise Beautiful. Be to All praise due to a lot. And on that great note, uh, I just want to ask you uh, publicly, uh, is there a way that we can come back for a part two of this? Oh, absolutely, brother. Anytime okay. you're ready, you just let okay. me know and we'll work it out. Yes, yeah, so I'll message you offline. I just want to let you know, my sister Naima said, beautiful presentation. Brother Roosevelt, all the way from New Orleans, holding it down, sending you love. So, uh, Miriam says, all praise to Allah. This is awesome footage. And once I put this on YouTube, people are going to show you love even more across the world. I want to thank you again. We got to get part two. We got to get part two because we want to get more questions from the audience as well. But that was beautiful footage. Uh, Brother, uh, Student Minister Leo, I want to thank you. On behalf of myself, my family, and the viewing audience of the People's Podcast for taking time out of your busy schedule to come and give us this amazing information and inspiration. We take we take all of your words. Uh, we don't take them for granted. We are honored by your presence, sir. And I thank a lot for you and your family and the believers holding it down over the pond, across the pond, uh, representing strong the way that you all do. Uh, this is Joshua Leonard Muhammad signing off for the People's Podcast. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Uh, Walaikum salam. Thank you so much, my dear beloved brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I do apologize. I'm not sure what the, my image <laughs> looks like, but I've got some some sun streaming in. <laughs> it's all good. It's all right good. And, uh, but yes, I'm, I'm very thankful and grateful for the opportunity. And I look forward, dear brother, um, to a part two uh, where maybe, you know, uh, your audience can maybe us pose some questions and, and so on and so forth and so that we can explore uh, maybe this topic and other topics a little bit deeper but i thank absolutely you. thank you may allah bless you may allah continue to bless your family as i greet you as i found you in peace as yes, alaykum. Well, alaykum salam sir thank you very much um...